Hello, and welcome to this presentation on accelerometry guided interbeat interval assessment from wrist photoplethysmography. It's thought that if atrial fibrillation was adequately treated in England, then 2,000 lives would be saved per year, 7,000 strokes would be prevented, and an additional 425,000 diagnoses would be made. One potential approach to detect atrial fibrillation across the population is to use wearable devices such as smartwatches, which are often equipped with photoplethysmography sensors, that's optical sensors that monitor the pulse wave, and can use these sensors to detect an irregular pulse, which may be a sign of atrial fibrillation. However, a key challenge here is that photoplethysmogram signals, such as shown while sitting on the left and walking on the right here, can be highly noisy when there's movement, and this can create false interbeat interval estimation and lead to false alarms. To introduce myself, my name is Peter Charlton, and I'm a biomedical engineering researcher at the University of Cambridge. I work with clinicians, such as those at St Thomas's Hospital shown here, to develop signal processing techniques for wearables and to work towards translating them into clinical practice. Since working in this hospital, I've now started focusing on using wearables in daily life to monitor the wider population. In this work, we uh, investigated a new approach to assess the quality of PPG signals and their suitability for interbeat interval estimation. This plot now shows the accelerometry signals provided by a wearable below each of the PPG signals. And you can see that uh, while sitting, the accelerometry signal is very stable, indicating a low level of movement. But whilst walking, there is high variation in the accelerometry signal. And our hypothesis was that one could use these accelerometry signals to assess the level of movement and that this would be associated with the quality of PPG signals based on the assumption that noise would be due to movement. So the aim of this work was to investigate whether accelerometry signals could be used to predict whether or not interbeat intervals could be accurately measured from simultaneous PPG signals at the wrist. Our objectives were to assess the classification performance of such an approach, to identify an optimal classification threshold below which the level of movement would be deemed to be small enough that the PPG signal would be expected to be of high quality, and to assess the performance of this approach across different activities. We conducted this experiment as follows. We used data from the publicly available WESAD and PPG Dahlia datasets, both of which contain wrist PPG signals collected from an Empatica E4 alongside accelerometry signals, also from this device, and reference chest ECG signals. The data were collected in protocols designed to um, elucidate different activities. So in the WESAD dataset it was a stress protocol designed uh, to elucidate these emotions from baseline moving to meditation, amusement and then stress. And in the PPG Dahlia dataset um, this protocol consisted of several different activities of daily living. Each dataset contains data from 15 subjects. We estimated interbeat intervals from the PPG as follows. We used a high-performance beat detector algorithm from the publicly available PPG Beats toolbox to identify beats. And then we took the middle amplitude points on each pulse wave as the time of each beat. And you can see, indicated by the red circles, the beats detected while sitting on the left and whilst walking on the right. We then analysed the simultaneous accelerometry signals um, 
to assess the level of movement. And we did this by calculating the mean absolute deviation of the accelerometry signals. So shown in red is the absolute deviation of the accelerometry signal from its mean value. And then uh, shown in black is the mean absolute deviation across these 10 seconds. And note that the y-axes are quite different between these two plots. So on the left, the mean absolute deviation is 3.9 milli gravitational units, whereas on the right, it's over 300. So a marked difference. We obtained reference interbeat intervals from the simultaneous ECG signals. And to do this, we used two beat detection algorithms. We ran them both on the ECG signal. And for each 20 period, we deemed the ECG signal to be of high quality if both beat detectors agreed on the location of beats. So shown here in black is an example of a low quality period. And then on the right in blue is a high quality period. And we eliminated low quality periods from the analysis. Uh, you can read more about these tools in this paper here. So the results. Well, firstly, this shows the proportion of interbeat intervals estimated from the PPG, which were correct in each activity. And by correct, I mean that they had uh, an error of less than five beats per minute when used to calculate instantaneous heart rates in comparison to the reference ECG instantaneous heart rates. And you can see that generally those activities associated with lower levels of movement um, had higher proportions of correct interbeat intervals. Do take note of those which had low proportions, stress, and then the uh, physical activities shown on the right. We looked at the classification performance of this accelerometry-based approach using firstly the area under the receiver operator curve, uh, achieving 0.78, and then also because of imbalance in the data set, the area under the precision recall curve, which was also close to 0.8. So reasonable performance across all the data. We then identified an optimal threshold. So shown on the x-axis are the candidate thresholds in milligravitational units. And then on the y-axis on the left is the mean absolute error when using those thresholds to exclude data above the threshold. And we chose um, to take an optimal threshold as that which had a mean absolute error just below 5 beats per minute. So here that was 12.9. Note that the proportion of data which falls below the threshold increases as you increase the threshold. And so um, here we are eliminating um, over 50% of the data from uh, the analysis by um, using this threshold. And just for context, this threshold uh, stands approximately between sedentary behaviours and uh, low intensity activities. So this threshold indicates that interbeat intervals could be um, accurately estimated during sedentary behaviours. And this is in line with previous studies of detecting atrial fibrillation from PPG signals, such as the Apple and Fitbit heart studies. Now, it's interesting to look at the performance across different activities. So shown on the left is the mean absolute error for the data below the threshold. And you see that for free activities, stress, table soccer and walking, it was particularly high. So it did not perform well in these activities. However, table soccer and walking, you can see on the right that the vast majority of the data for these activities was deemed to be low quality, i.e. it fell above the threshold, as shown by the large yellow bars. However, for stress, there was a large proportion shown in red of incorrect interbeat intervals, which were obtained from data deemed to be high quality. So for stress, this did not perform well. So why does it not work, or why does it work or not work? Well, it works well when noise is due to movement. So you can see that while sitting down on the left, um, the acceleration is low, and uh, by and large, the PPG quality is high. 
and the opposite is true on the right for walking. It correctly identifies low PPG quality from a high acceleration. However, it does not work well when uh, the noise in the signal is not associated with movement. So in this example of stress, um, the, there wasn't much movement on, as indicated by the accelerometer, but the PPG wasn't of very high quality. So in the future, perhaps the, an optimal approach might be to combine uh, this accelerometry-based approach at the bottom with other work on assessing PPG signal quality directly from the PPG signal. With that, I'd like to thank my colleagues, um, institutions and funder who have supported this, and to conclude by saying accelerometry can be used to identify periods when interbeat intervals can be accurately measured from PPG signals during physical activities with reasonable performance. A threshold of 12.9 mi milligravitational units corresponds to a cutoff between sedentary and low intensity activities. And if we want to be, this to be as safe as using a climbing rope, then combining accelerometry and PPG based assessments may provide improved performance compared to using either approach on its own. With that, I would like to thank you for listening and point you towards my website and the slides for this talk. Thank you.